how many sets and reps should you do when you are rehabilitating your painful muscles? This is a question I get all the time, guys, all the time. Every single client asks me this, and unfortunately, it depends. But there are some principles that we can adhere to. Now, the, the thing is that it really, how much you can do, it really depends on how degenerated and impaired the muscles really are or injured they are. And we can, uh, by using some simple principles, we can basically regulate this to get the optimal result. Now, as I've talked about before, especially if you have like a nerve entrapment, you want to gently stimulate the muscles. Now, let's say you're strengthening your scalenes. It's a very important uh, thing to do if you have thoracic alpha syndrome, for example. Now, uh, if they are very, very weak, you see there becomes a fibrotic infiltration of the actual structure. So the normal gliding of the tissue uh, tissues is impaired and you get rigidity of the muscle. So you can actually, uh, bec it becomes thicker and more rigid and it becomes like kind of like a steel wire, okay? And when this happens, you will have uh, pain in the muscle, okay? And you can also get uh, irritation of the adjacent structures, such as the brachial plexus, for example, in TOS. Now, how do you know how much you should do? Well, first of all, the most important principle of all of this is that you always need to ensure that you're having progress. And to have progress, you cannot overstimulate. Actually, it's easier to have progress if you understimulate than if you overstimulate when it comes to rehabilitation. And I've learned this the hard way because I've struggled a lot with this with a lot of patients when it did not have any progress. So, of course, if we are sure that we're doing the exercise correctly and we're getting some kind of reproduce, uh, reproduction of the symptoms afterwards, usually the day after, the degree of exacerbation of the pain will somewhat guide us in uh, in regards to this regulation so first of all you how, mu how much should you do you should find a rep amount that causes a mild not moderate a mild exacerbation the, the day after so for example in tos patients often they can do like five repetitions if they do it properly to do more than that you're generally going to have a significant exacerbation of the problems so the exercise should be heavy you should do one set until you have a moderate fatigue. Day after, you should feel a slight exacerbation in your symptoms. If you have a significant exacerbation, you did too much. Okay, it's that simple. And even if you just did five reps and you have an exacerbation, don't don't go into that pitfall that you think that oh I should do more. Because here's the thing, guys: if you get pain, it's enough. Even if you did two reps, it's enough. If you get pain, the muscle is telling you this is all I can handle. That's why you get these issues because the work capacity is severely impaired. Okay, so it should be heavy. You should have a mild exacerbation the day after, um, and you should have a progress. Now, how do you evaluate the progress? First of all, you have to be sure that you're doing the exercise properly. If you're cheating a little bit, you can, you know, you can probably sneak out at least five, ten reps extra, and that's very misleading. So first, you need to know that you're doing it properly. Now. Um, how do you, how do you actually um, measure your 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 increments? Well, so let's say you start in January and you start to do three reps per day of the scaling, for example, for example, a TOS patient. And then as time progresses, you have a mild exacerbation the day after. Great. If there is anything more than that, uh, you're doing too much. If there's anything less than that, usually the the patient will be doing too less, too little. Okay. Uh, or sorry, doing the exercise wrongly. Now, let's say you are having a mild exacerbation. It's heavy, you're getting a mild exacerbation the day after, great, but you're not having any progress. Now, this is where it comes in, uh, the, uh, the principle of overtraining. Now, how do you know if you're overtraining? And this is my take on it. Some people may disagree, that's fine. But I think that you should look how tired you are even from the first rep. You see, when someone is starting to get overtrained, when the muscle uh, is not really recovering from the stimulus that you're giving it, you will start to feel fatigue even when you're just starting from the first rep. You know, when the muscle is healthy, I, I mean, yes, weak, but healthy, you will start, you will feel that the first rep is okay, second rep okay, let's say you can, let's say you can have like five rep capacity, so then you, when you get to the fourth and fifth rep, you start to feel like, okay, this is enough. Now, if you're overtrained, you're still able to usually pump out those five reps, but it will feel really heavy even from the first rep. So if you have 
fatigue even from the first repetition, then it, th that's an indication. I, I would say it's not a, like a rule of the universe, but it's an indication that you are starting to get overtrained. You should reduce your repetitions a little bit, even if you're just doing five or ten or whatever, because a lot of people are used to doing like three times uh, uh, ten. If you do that for a problem like this, you're going to brutalize your neck or, or your thighs or whatever it is. Okay, So let's see if we can conclude this. It should be heavy. You should have a mild not moderate, mild exacerbation the day after. And you should feel that you're not tired from the first repetition. Those are like the golden rules. Now these principles, you implement them to your program. And by using these principles, you will know if you're doing too much or too little. So let's say you have a problem with your psoas. That's very common. And you, and you think, well, should I do 10 reps? Well, you do, I mean, you do 10 reps and you try. And if you feel horrible the day after, then you try five, right? So let's say you try five and you feel, okay, it's not crazy, but you feel uh, a little pain afterwards. So fine, try that for a couple of weeks. And you generally do that five reps, one time, twice per week, okay? So five reps Monday, for example, five reps on Thursday. So let's say three weeks pass and you start to feel that you are tired even from the first repetition. Because you see fatigue is accumulating. So then you go down to three reps and you do that two times per week. And this is how you regulate. And you gradually climb the ladder because you see with with problems like this the muscles have been weak for many many years and it does take some time to rehabilitate them a lot of times it can take a year it doesn't mean you're not going to be better until a year but it, until you have a significant strength improvement in many circumstances it will take a year so that's why you have to keep your ego in check if it has passed eight weeks and you have you know tripled your your work capacity i don't think so forget it that's just your ego you're cheating in the exercises so yeah, so we also have to include realism in those in those principles. So in conclusion, it should be heavy. You should have a mild exacerbation the day after. Um, you should not have a significant fatigue from the first rep, and you should gradually, over the course of time, over the course of months, see a very gradual increase in strength. Okay, and if you are qualified to do that, you can also palpate the muscle and see if it's actually increasing in density. That's also pretty good a <laughs> pretty good uh, indication that you're on to the right track okay so i hope this video was informative probably a little confusing way to explain it but this is basically how i think when i evaluate the progress of my patients okay i wish you the best of luck everyone <laughs>